thing. So Pete Fitch, he's going to talk to us about Wojciech the Bear. Great, thanks very much. Uh, um, Jamie <laughs> Um, uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to talk uh, about uh, Wojciech the Bear, uh, and I'm going to tell you about why uh, a bear carrying a bomb uh, has uh, turned up on, on a beer mat. Um, but before I do that, I have to give you a quick history lesson. Uh, so, uh, it is 1939, and on the 1st of September, Germany invades Poland, uh, and uh, England at that point, um, and the Allies uh, declare war a couple of days later. The, everyone can remember that thing about, I think it's, I think war was declared on the 3rd of September, was it? Um, but what, um, the date that, um, that people, that kind of gets uh, left behind is that uh, is the 17th of September, uh, Russia then uh, invades Poland uh, from the east. Um, it was uh, Stalin and Hitler had uh, had a pre-arranged pact uh, of a kind of double whammy uh, on it, and uh, Poland was um, split down the middle. Uh, uh, at that point, um, uh, Poland's population was about 25 million. There was about 13 million uh, adults in the uh, or uh, people in the uh, the part that Poland had. Um, and around about 10% of that population, it's, uh, they don't know the exact figures, but it's, it's between uh, 1 and 2 million of the Poles who were in that Russian uh, section, would then, uh, they were then uh, taken by the Russians and they were sent to Siberia. Uh, they went on cattle trucks. Uh, it's, uh, this was uh, in the winter um, of 1940, uh, early 1940. Um, and they were um, they were shunted uh, uh, in these cattle trucks. Um, lots uh, sadly uh, died and perished on the way. Uh, and they made their way over to Siberia. Siberia is kind of um, is up there, kind of sort of Kazakhstan, Mongolia area. Uh, is uh, so we all know that from Lands End to John O'Groats is a thousand miles. So that's your uh, so you could just see just how uh, how long that journey is. Uh, and uh, the population were, were there, they were um, doing uh, mining or agricultural work uh, and hard labour in very hard uh, conditions. Um, uh, the, then in 1942, Germany attacked Poland, uh, attacked uh, Russia, and, uh, and at that point um, the Russians uh, gave a, a brief amnesty to some of the Poles and uh, said that they could uh, form an army and join join the Allies and join in with the uh, uh, with the battle against the Germans. Um, around it was a so that bearing in mind there was kind of between one and two million. It, it wasn't a, a large amount of them. There was a, uh, it's about one hundred and fifty thousand uh, of those poles uh, uh, got together. Um, a small number of them went actually over to the um, uh, the Polish uh, front to fight, but the majority. Uh, of them uh, travelled uh, down, uh, joined up with the Anders army, and they travelled down through uh, through in um, what was then called Persia, uh, uh, all the way down to um, uh, Afghanistan and Iran, Iraq, uh, and uh, and they made the long journey. It was called the, the journey of hope, and um, uh, and that's where uh, our next uh, where where our story begins. Now, on the way down. Uh, when they were in um, Afghanistan, the, the Polish troops they were um, they were sort of a, uh, they were very malnourished, uh, mal malnourished. Thanks. Um, uh, there weren't a lot of uh, there were there was no senior officers. Uh, when all the Poles got together, you know they were going all right. We're, we're going to create our army. Or we're going to have our army back. Um, but none of the senior officers kind of turned up. What had happened is, in fact, the Russians uh, had uh, captured all the uh, Polish uh, senior officers, or, uh, professional officers, and they'd taken to the uh, to be interrogated. And about 20,000 uh, 20, of the uh, senior officers had all been uh, massacred in the uh, forests of Katyn. Um, and so the and so they had this this army that needed to be uh, fed, uh, needed to be transported down. They needed to be uh, taught 
basically uh, all the skills, and they had to kind of uh, uh, almost kind of create an army, uh, especially from the from the top end, uh, um, uh, afresh. They reached uh, Afghanistan, and the uh, and when the army um, when the boys uh, were were going on through, there was this little boy who by the side of the road uh, he had a little bear cub. The bear cub, uh, the mother had been shot by hunters, and the um, uh, the soldiers were really taken with this bear cub, uh, and uh, and they um, and they thought this was really quite cute, uh, and so in exchange for uh, a few of their provisions, uh, they bought uh, the bear cub, and they named him Wojtek. Wojtek means little warrior, um, and uh, here were some pictures. Now I am going to. Uh, ask you to uh, recall just how small this little bear is, okay? Because um, bears grow, just in case you don't know. If you get one for Christmas, you know, you, know, you think they're really cute, uh, and they are. But uh, uh, so here we are, they, um, uh, they fed it on, uh, they had milk, they used to um, have uh, their old um, bottles which they would put muslin over uh, and feed it uh, much like a baby. Uh, and um, uh, there we are, more pictures of it, and um, uh, and it and because uh, the bear was uh, had basically been uh, um, separated from from uh, his mother from a very young age, and uh, was uh, um, it became very very uh, domesticated. Wojtek uh, uh, just became almost like a pet. Note: bear is growing, um, and. Um, uh, Wojtek absolutely loved water. Whenever he found uh, a, a pool of water, he would he would jump in it. If there was a stream or a river, he'd love uh, being in there. Uh, he loved nothing better than a um, uh, a big muddy um, a big muddy pond puddle. Puddle. That's the word. I'm losing my words. Um, uh, there's one story that apparently he he worked out how to use this. They had a sort of shower system. You know, a pulley system, and he used to like going in and uh, uh, a showering. And one time, there was uh, there was someone who had had infiltrated the camp, uh, a, a kind of a spy from a, a potential uh, sort of rebel uh, unit, uh, and uh, who was hiding in there, and uh, and uh, got the shock of his life when uh, Wojtek uh, went in and came and came out screaming uh, and captured him. And apparently, uh, Wojtek got uh, extra provisions that day. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so as they travelled, he grew. Um, he used to. He loved. Uh, he used to love um, hanging out with them, and he would. He kind of. Uh, they would be drinking a beer, and he would drink beer as well uh, with them. Note size of bear. Note uh, also. Note the um, uh, just uh, just how sharp his claws are, uh, as well. Uh, not only that. Um, but he also, uh, when they were smoking their cigarettes, Wojtek would uh, put out his paw and he would ask for it. And they, they, gave, they would give him a cigarette and he'd take it and then he'd just eat it. Uh, and, um, but, you know, he just saw himself as kind of sort of, uh, he was one of the boys. Uh, and he, um, he loved wrestling. Uh, he loved wrestling with them, note size of bear. Uh, he loved wrestling with them. Uh, and in uh, now, in this next one, what I'm going to show you, this is the only live footage uh, that there that there is, and it's it lasts for about sort of seven seconds. So <coughs> blink and you'll miss it. But just look at the power uh, of Wojtek. It's actually really quite scary. This. But the amazing thing is that there were no reports that anybody ever got injured. Um, but it's, you'll see from this, it's quite clear that Wojtek could have killed, if he wanted, would have, uh, could have killed him. So let's, oh, this is good. So there we are, that's the, so, um, but there were no, uh, no reports of, uh, of any injuries. Um, so, Anyway, the, um, the, the army and Wojtek had uh, travelled down as, uh, uh, and now they had uh, come down through Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq and they uh, reached Egypt and uh, this was when uh, they were kind of uh, ready uh, for battle. Um, 
and this is where they came up uh, against a bureaucratic uh, problem. And the bureaucratic problem was uh, created actually by, by uh, the British, because the uh, British said, um, um, basically, Voitex, uh, a mascot, uh, is only working animals that can be allowed. Uh, they, were going to, they were due to go uh, across the Mediterranean to, to Italy to begin the Italian campaign. And the Poles turned up and they went, hey, we've got, our, we've got this, uh, this bear, uh, our uh, beer-drinking, uh, cigarette-eating uh, bear. And, uh, and they said, um, they said, no, you, you can't do that. That's, this was, a, this was a, a working dog that was on the site. Apparently he had a very, he had a um, uneasy relationship uh, with the dog. The dog was a, was a working dog. Um, and and the, uh, the English said, uh, no, the, Wojtek can't go. Uh, because he's, uh, they said he's just your, your mascot. But the, to the Poles, this was just unthinkable. Um, uh, now, I've shown you lots of pictures up to now, and I'm going to show you some of the pictures that you've already looked at. Now, up to now, you probably just looked at Wojtek. I'm going to show you the pictures now, and look at the soldiers. Look at the smiles on the soldiers. And there again, you can kind of see the pleasure uh, on the faces of the soldiers. And again, <laughs> The feeling of warmth and the feeling of joy that he gave them. And to them, he represented something. Uh, they had a connection with him. Like, like them, he, was, he, oh, he didn't have a family. His, family. his family were dead. Maybe their family were dead. Their family were, were thousands of miles away. They were separated. They were away from their homeland. They felt a real connection uh, with him. And so they weren't going to stand for this. So they came up with a cunning, cunning plan. And what they did was they enlisted him in the army. <laughs> they gave him a, uh, a number, they gave him uh, wages, uh, and, uh, and then they just sort of turned back up at the, uh, at the uh, English office uh, at the port, and they just said, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is Private Wojtek. Uh, and the English just kind of went, Oh, okay, we're not going to argue with this. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, he uh, went on the gangplank plank, uh, up onto the boat and he set sail uh, to the Mediterranean. And uh, he went into Italy and uh, he started seeing uh, active service. Now, um, Wojtek, when uh, he, he would, when, you know, when his mates were around, he often wanted to hang out and do what his mates were doing, whether it was drinking beer, uh, uh, eating cigarettes or sometimes kind of sort of carrying stuff. Um, so um, here we are of him uh, carrying logs. Um, there are also um, very well documented uh, stories that when they were unloading provisions off the back of trucks, that he you know they would he would go and put his paws out and uh, and they would give something to him and he would carry them. And there are reports that he carry he carried bombs. Uh, and they say that you know, and but he he never dropped any. Uh, quite quite where the level of this story is that you know of of, of truth, but uh, but there are several people who swear blind that, that this is uh, uh, what happened. Um, so uh, he wasn't always uh, he wasn't always as compliant uh, a private as this. Sometimes he you know he did just go and kind of like climb up trees and just sit there for like half a day as well. He, he wasn't like necessarily. <laughs> Like uh, a, a great worker, so he, you know, he did, sometimes did what bears do. Um, so he saw active service. He was uh, in Monte Cassino, where the Poles had a, a very big uh, role in the capture of this monastery uh, in um, in Italy. That was uh, um, it was one of uh, outside of Stalingrad. It was the bloodiest um, battle uh, in the whole of World War Two in uh, in Europe, anyway. Um, and um, uh, he was there. And then kind of made his way uh, north through uh, through uh, Italy, uh, and um, here's uh, here's a picture. They used to sometimes, um, uh, if they were going into town, uh, they would uh, they would take him in the truck, uh, and they would um, uh, you know sometimes some of you may do this with if you've got a dog. Uh, you, you don't actually maybe lock the car, but you, you know if you've got a ferocious dog, you just leave that and that no one's going to come and take it, and no one, there's no reports of anyone ever stealing the truck whilst Wojtek uh, was there. Um, if you just look at this symbol, there's this symbol on the side, we'll do a close-up there. 
uh, this symbol here uh, then became the uh, symbol of the um, uh, of uh, of his regiment. Uh, they were the 22nd Artillery. Um, so there he is. Uh, it's uh, Wojtek uh, holding a um, uh, holding uh, a bomb. Um, but uh, then the war finished, uh, and um, the um, uh, Churchill um, wrote to all the Polish soldiers and said, "Right, the war was finished, and now it's time. You know, you you can go back to your country and uh, and help rebuild it." But considering that all these Russia had now invaded Poland and all of these people had been captured by the Russians and sent to Siberia, they didn't exactly go rushing back to uh, to Poland to kind of just repeat the uh, repeat the um, the process. So. A small percentage of maybe about 10% of them kind of went back to uh, Poland. Uh, a few kind of hung around in Italy, but the vast majority uh, came to England. And Wojtek the Bear was one of those who came to England. In fact, uh, he came uh, up to Scotland. Um, there were lots of um, camps all over, d dotted all over uh, England with, um, uh, with Polish uh, soldiers. Uh, in fact, straight after the war, the biggest group of uh, immigrants uh, for, uh, were, were Poles. Uh, and um, you still see this in kind of, you can see, uh, when you look uh, where there's little pockets of uh, Polish communities, a lot of those will have stemmed out of these, these camps that would have been there for two or three years and they've been disbanded and a lot of people would have kind of stayed in the community. Uh, so he moved, uh, it was just on the borders, uh, a little, near a little town called Duns. Uh, on the Scottish borders, uh, and uh, and he had a, a it was a, a lovely uh, time of uh, rest and relaxation. They found a um, they found a local um, uh, reservoir that he used to like go um, uh, swimming in. No size of bear. Um, now and the other thing is um, uh, there was uh, there were there was a little uh, village uh, nearby, and uh, the soldiers used to go. Uh, there um, on a Saturday, they was uh, dancing, and they used to take uh, Wojtek uh, with them. You know, he'd always, he'd always enjoyed, um, he'd always enjoyed uh, dancing. So they, uh, they used to take uh, take him there, and it was, uh, it was not surprising. It was the talk of the village uh, when, uh, um, and apparently the pol the uh, the ladies were were most taken with um, with these uh, these Polish soldiers and the bear. Um, apparently, the the men less so. You know the. They, these bloody foreign foreigners coming over, dancing with our women, bringing their bears to our, <laughs> to our dances. Um, but uh, um, so, uh, but uh, but there's no reports again of uh, of any uh, injuries. Um, he then um, uh, it was uh, for a couple of years. That's where they stayed, and then and then basically uh, the um, the the um, regiment was uh, disbanded and it was time to kind of for them all to disperse and kind of get on with life uh, and uh, but they didn't know what to do uh, with Wojtek uh, and um, they were there was a real quandary uh, about it and uh, and it was one of the considerations was actually shooting him and uh, and uh, ending his life uh, there was, uh, but then the uh, local zoo, Edinburgh Zoo, stepped in and they said, we'll, we will take him. There had been conversations about him going to Poland. Um, Wojtek had never been to Poland, as if you've been paying attention, uh, <laughs> but uh, was intrinsically linked with it. But they were very worried that he was going to be used by the Russians for, uh, for um, propaganda reasons, uh, or they was concerned that they would, um, they would kill him. Uh, so anyway, he went off to uh, Edinburgh Zoo, uh, and here uh, he is in Edinburgh Zoo. Now, um, I'd love to say it was he had a lovely end to his life, um, but uh, but he he wasn't particularly happy uh, in the zoo because he was a bear who was used to kind of hanging out with people and uh, hanging out with his Polish pals, uh, and so he was uh, he was quite a sort of a, a, a grumpy grumpy bear. There's there's talks that. Um, the only, what used to cheer him up is the, some of the Polish soldiers would uh, come and um, uh, they would come and uh, um, uh, see him. And when he could hear 
Polish being spoken, he immediately he got he would get all excited. He would, and then the um, and then the uh, the Polish soldiers they they, they would come and they would uh, they would go hey Wojtek and they would lob cigarettes into the uh, um, uh, much to the uh, chagrin of the uh, zookeeper and and he would eat uh, joyously eat the cigarettes and then and then the bloody poles they would climb over the fence and they come in and they start wrestling with him so bloody poles coming in to our zoo giving our bears cigarettes and wrestling with them. Um, now, the story kind of, uh, this story now moves from the bear to this little girl. This little girl is called Eileen Orr. And uh, she used to go, she used to love going to see Wojtek the Bear. And uh, then when she was an adult, she uh, wrote this book. And, uh, and I found this book about five years ago. And, um, and I picked it up and I went, Wow, this is amazing, because I had heard this story before, and I'd totally forgotten. It's one of those stories that I'd heard when I was a child, and I'd kind of just, just put it to one side. And it was like, oh my God, and I started reading it, and I realized that all these things were true. And the reason I had heard this story was from this man, and this man was my father. And uh, my father was a, uh, as a young Pole, he was uh, 16, and he was taken by the Russians with his uh, mother, um, and they were taken to Siberia, and then he had escaped and, uh, with his mother. His mother joined the, um, uh, the Red Cross, and, uh, and then they'd gone, made that journey down through Persia and into Egypt, and, uh, and into uh, Italy, and he was at Monte Cassino. And he had told me, about this bear. Now, the way that the story was, was a bit more like this, maybe. <laughs> and the thing is, like, when you're a small child, I mean, you kind of realise that there, there was a point when you're a child and you're told stories and you, and you kind of absorb it all. And then you get to a little bit older and, uh, and, you, st and, you, and you start to realise that maybe the tooth fairy isn't real and maybe uh, Santa Claus uh, spoiler alert! You know, you know, you, you start having doubts. At which point, I, you know, I kind of went, oh, "Yeah, I don't really believe that one." And I kind of, so I, I've been told the story, but not really kind of sort of believed it. But now I had evidence uh, of it. But, um, but sadly, my father had died about two years before I got hold of this book, uh, which had kind of awoken this story and and. Uh, um, and it had a kind of uh, also kind of piqued my interest again. Uh, so and then I started looking, and then, then I found there was another book about it, and then there was another book, and another book, and another book, and it was some chocolate and from the back of a bus, and on a and on a in Krakow, and then he was in a beer, and there's statues of him. If you go to in London, there's a Sikorsky uh, uh, Institute. There's a um, and a statue of him there, and you can see that that's the, uh, that's the insignia uh, there. Um, there's also a statue in Monza in Italy. Uh, there's also a statue in Krakow in Poland, uh, even though he was never in Krakow. And uh, there's also a statue in Grimsby, even though he was never in Grimsby. And there's a statue in Duns. Now, he was very close to Duns, uh, so there was, uh, there's a statue there. And, and then when I was kind of looking this up, then um, Duns is twinned with a, uh, a town in, uh, in Poland. Uh, and, uh, and so they have got, the, they have got that. And, uh, and then I was, reading the, um, I was reading the inscription underneath this, and it says, you know, uh, the, the statue of Wojtek the Bear um, with um, Wojtek Narebski. Uh, and, it's, uh, and, Wojtek, and Wojtek Narebski was my dad's mate. And I met Wojtek Narebski. I remember Wojtek Narebski coming and staying in our house. Um, Wojtek Narebski was one of those few of the 10% when the war finished who actually went back to Poland. Um, but there, I always remember that when my dad talked about uh, his time in the war and his colleagues, he always talked about Wojtek Narebski. And then Wojtek Narebski has become like the, the international face of whenever there's... Um, uh, he speaks very good English and uh, he's done so... Um, if you look on YouTube, there's, uh, often he's kind of wheeled out and, and uh, chatting about uh, uh, Wojtek the Bear. 
and it kind of made me think. Now, my father, um, my father never, um, he never, he said that he didn't actually meet the bear, but he knew about the bear. And, uh, and you know, all the soldiers kind of like would have uh, talked about him. But I kind of would have loved to have um, talked to him more and also talked to him a little bit more about his experience of the war because he talked a little bit about going to Siberia. Uh, he didn't really talk a lot about the war. Um, this was um, this was uh, the uh, the handler um, uh, from uh, this was uh, he had several handlers. Um, this guy was called uh, Pioch. Uh, he was he was absolutely broken hearted when Wojtek went uh, to the um, to the zoo. He couldn't bring himself to ever go and visit him, and people say that he was a, a broken man. But if you go to Edinburgh, um, in the park, there is a statue of uh, Piotr and Wojtek the Bear. Now, um, my father, my father was uh, Bolesław uh, Fialkowski. Um, his father, my grandfather, was also Bolesław Fialkowski. Um, my grandfather was one of those uh, senior officers who was taken by the Russians and was uh, massacred. Uh, was shot in the um, Katyn forest. And, uh, but when my dad was growing up, obviously, because he had the same name as his dad, they didn't use that name. Uh, they used his second name, and my dad's name was Wojtek. And this is Piotr, his handler, which is my name as well. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.